And we're live. I felt like Joe Rogan right there. Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. Um, good afternoon. And thanks again for joining us today for um, our third edition of Coronavirus Conversations. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jay Allred. I'm the president and publisher of Source Media Properties. And it is casual hoodie Wednesday um, here at the Allred House. Um, this webinar series that we've launched um, is to just sort of bring us a little closer together during these uncertain times um, without being physically together. Normally, the source would throw some sort of um, an audience engagement cocktail party at IdeaWorks, and we just can't do that right now to talk about this sort of time that we're in. And so we're trying to adapt, just like all of you are, and that's kind of the topic that we have today. Um, we're bringing in experts and topic level people from all over um, all over Richland County and tomorrow we'll have somebody from Philadelphia to talk about how to remote work like a pro. But today we're going to talk about um, small business resources and how our small business community is being affected by COVID-19, but then also how they're adapting and the resources that they have in front of them. And I have two of my best friends and colleagues and people that I really respect here um, with us today. And I really want to thank them. Um, I don't know what you're seeing on your screens, but on my left is Jennifer Keim of downtown Mansfield. Um, Jen is here to sort of represent DMI and talk to you a little bit about how downtown merchants are, are adapting to this and, and what she's seeing from her life. And then also on my right is Jody Perry, the president and CEO of the Richland Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, Jody's emails have become sort of like um, cult fan fiction as it, as it relates to the business <laughs> world and COVID-19. And she's gonna talk to you a little bit about how you can subscribe to that compelling email She's the only chamber president that I've ever known that quotes Tolkien at the end of her email. And so there's like the nerd cred is is high at this point. Um, so here's the format for these for the format for these discussions is pretty simple. Um, we limit them to about sixty minutes uh, or your lunch hour. Um, for the first 20 or 30 minutes, Jody and I and Jen are going to have a guided conversation about what they're seeing on their end with COVID-19, and then we're going to open it up to your questions. Um, I'm joined here in the chat with um, East Audience Engagement and Solutions Journalism Editor, Brittany Chalk. Say hi, Brittany, some way that you do that in the chat. Um, Brittany's here to kind of help guide um, everybody through that process, and she's She's going to be dropping resources in as the conversation goes along. And um, if you have questions, feel free to ask those questions using the question function as, we're, as Jody and Jen and I are talking, um, or drop those questions in the chat. And um, Brittany will be able to drop those in for us and help us with that. And um, we'll try to make sure we get them all answered. So guys, welcome. Thanks for coming on Coronavirus Conversations. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for having you. us. We're going to manage our way through this technology together as a team. Uh, so I sort of want to start with this sort of uh, table setter question. Um, and Jody, I'll start with you. Um, tell me just a little bit about the last two weeks of your life um, as it relates to COVID-19 and the job that you do every day. I mean, it has to have changed pretty amazing, pretty amazingly. <clears throat> well, um, yes, I, it, I would say that um, there's pretty much nothing that I'm doing now that I was doing before and vice versa. So the projects, pretty much any, almost any project I was working on prior to two weeks ago is just on full stop um, as our team has pivoted to uh, trying to help the community uh, work through this, uh, particularly obviously the business community since, since that's our, our focus. Um, but as you said, you know, the, the emails that, um, you know, I started sending out, seem to have uh, taken on a little bit of a life of their own and um, have a larger voice. And so, you know, we've, I, I can tell you, I've had every range of emotion in the last two weeks from um, uh, fear and terror, honestly, to uh, confidence. Um, I've, I've cried a whole lot. I've uh, had to talk myself into uh, just getting on with, with life as normal. Um, yes. And, you know, I mean, I think the last couple of days actually have started to settle a little bit. Um, 
you know, uh, had really difficult conversations with business owners. Um, and I think, you know, it was, it was about a week ago, I had a business owner call me and say, should I close? What should I do? And that was, you know, we had been on this slide of like, oh, what, what's happening? How do we handle mm -hmm. this? And that really was the, the call that just made me go, oh my God, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, you know, I didn't uh, take this job expecting that I was going to have to counsel people. And of course, I can't tell people what to do. Um, so, you know, what we've, what I've tried to focus on and, and is just trying to ask people questions, help them think through it. Um, it's really, um, it's been eye-opening. Um, and I think, you know, like you said, the a big thing that, that we're hearing uh, from everyone is just how much they appreciate uh, hearing from people and staying connected to people. Um, yeah. You know, we're all remote work at the chamber. Um, so, you know, my coworkers, my dog, and, uh, you know, connecting with our team every day has, has become extremely important, um, just to kind of keeping some sense of, of normalcy mm -hmm. through this. So it's been uh, unlike anything else that I've uh, certainly ever been through, but, um, but I feel and continue to feel confident we're gonna get through it um, and we will rebuild. Um, I think we're all ready to start that. We're not quite there yet, but, um, but that's, that's where we're at. Thanks, Jody. And I, you know, I, I, I feel you. I mean, every, we had a lot of projects that we had been working on and now um, coronavirus is our project. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, it's just become this thing of like, how do you help, how do you help your customers adapt? How do you help your readers adapt? This is really what this is all about. I mean, um, and trying to think through, you know, how you get people <clears throat> information that they need to feel as though they have some sort of control or agency over their lives. And I know that I talk to small businesses all the time and, you know, that's probably the thing that is scariest for them is that, you know, three weeks ago, they felt like they sort of knew what was up and now they're, you know, there's in many cases, they just don't know what's up. You know, and it's not anybody's fault necessarily. It's just it's imp no one has a crystal ball, and so it's really hard for them to manage their way through it. Jen, what's it look like on what's it been? What's been the last two weeks for you? I mean, it's at downtown Mansfield. You guys do so much under the radar um, to help move Mansfield's downtown business district forward, and I know you have counterparts in Mount Vernon and and mm -hmm. Ashland as well. Um, but maybe share with everybody a little bit of what you're seeing um, and what those last two weeks have been like for you guys. So, I mean, pretty similar to, to, to what Jody described and what you're describing. I mean, you know, a few weeks back, we started to see what was coming and started to really, you know, look at the programs and projects we have at DMI and what our current goals and, and structure was and the things we were looking forward to um, and working on getting all those in place and then started to see what was happening, what was possible, what was going to be happening, and just started looking down the road to say, okay, a few weeks out, what are we going to see here? And then, you know, our discussions internally started to become, how do we keep this downtown vibe alive? You know, how do we keep, excuse me, my earpiece is below. How do we keep um, these, if we don't have the traditional downtown experience possible for bars and restaurants or a lot of businesses moving forward, how can we as DMI and the community really try to keep this downtown vibe that we have going moving forward in a whole new virtual type of way? So, um, you know, in addition to talking with lots of businesses about what they can do and how they're doing it and, you know, really trying to promote them as much as we can um, directly and then also indirectly, how do we structure DMI as an organizational feature that, you know, really works towards how do we keep this downtown community functioning? If you can't be downtown, how can we make you remember how great it is downtown so that as soon as we possibly can, we all want to be back down there right away. So the goal really for us is, you know, manage this as best as we can now, keep the businesses that are rolling, rolling as much as we can, and then keep them, everybody ready to just plug and play when we get back. Because we really believe that, you know, at the end of this, 
we're, we're, we're all going to have a huge celebration. We're going to be super excited. We're all going to be- come together again and really just enjoy even more all the chances we have to be together. So we're really focused on, we can't wait to get to that point. And how do we, how do we, you know, bridge that gap in the meantime and how do we get there? Yeah, it's, you know, that we were talking about just, I think yesterday or a couple, three days ago, we were talking about our newsroom after hours series that we've hosted for the last few years at source and, you know, trying to make some decisions about like what that, what happens with that? Does that go virtual? Does it, do we press pause Mm -hmm. on it? Um, You know, are we, do we sort of concentrate it all into a day long festival in September that is just, you know, all the bands that would have played over the course of the first four months. And then we just throw a huge banger in the back, in the back alley of our building. Like, you know, we just don't know. And, you know, and it's, it's sort of making peace with some of that uncertainty is kind of uh, allows, allows you to get back a little bit of the control because it's not like you're alone in that uncertainty. It's kind of the hardest and the easiest part about this all, right, Mm -hmm. is that this is all new to all of us. We've never done this before. We're all pivoting and transitioning. Um, So it's that's the hard part. And then the other part is we're all really in this together. And I just can't say enough how proud I am of our downtown community and our downtown businesses, the way they've responded to this. I mean, everyone has been really just phenomenal. And we've seen lots of businesses do really great, innovative things that they hadn't done before and really pivot in doing that. We've seen some make hard decisions to close temporarily, Mm -hmm. um, but all of them really doing what's best for their business and their families and the community. And I think, you know, it really has unveiled even more what a great community we have downtown. Yeah, we are really lucky. I mean, and and I think you're seeing that likely, Jody, you probably have a little bit wider lens on this, but you're probably seeing that same level of um, kind of commitment and community that are happening all over the county, I would imagine. You might want, could you yeah. speak to that a little bit in terms of what you're seeing? For sure. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I actually have been thinking about writing a, um, I don't know, an op-ed or an article on this because, you know, what I've been witnessing from the business community has been really amazing. Um, you know, from owners who are really, you uh, you know, facing tough decisions about needing to lay people off, things like that, but wanting to make sure that their employees are taken care of um, during time um, to, uh, we actually have been uh, asked by Jobs Ohio to find, you know, do we have local manufacturers that can help manufacture personal protective equipment? Obviously, we've heard a lot from the state and actually internationally that there's a, um, a shortage of that everywhere. And so one of the great things that we have in Ohio is a strong manufacturing community. It's something that we actually have uh, great here in Richland County as well. So I'm happy to tell you, you know, we've had it, um, almost a dozen businesses step up and say, we think we have pieces or parts that could be helpful. Um, some of them have just said, you know, it, we're willing to help if you can think of a way. Um, a couple have said, we actually are already working on it. And so we've been able to put them in touch with the state. So, you know, what comes out of that, we don't know yet, but I think that has just been amazing. Um, Another thing too is, you know, we've uh, in my emails, I think it was maybe last week that the health department called and said, hey, there's a shortage of PPE um, and there's a lot of businesses that have it, you know, salons and barber shops and places like that that have it. can you put a call out to see who will donate? And and we have, um, and many have answered. Um, Melissa at uh, uh, Studio 19 um, has been doing a drive the last few days as well. Um, and that is still very much needed. So if um, people have not had a chance to donate, please, please, please think about that. If you have a surplus of anything that would be considered PPE, um, that is a need. But watching the business community step up, offer to help, want want to help, I think has been really amazing to, to see. That's awesome. Um, can you, maybe let's talk a little bit about, because one of the things that we really wanted to try to do here was we know that our guests are taking tons of questions individually one at a time so the phone rings and the question gets asked and you do your very best to answer it 
And then 10 minutes later, the email comes in and the same question gets asked and you do your very best to answer it. And that is probably a lather, rinse and repeat kind of a situation for you guys right now um, in your positions. And so one of the reasons that we're doing this is to try to connect people that are interested in this topic so that they can hear you answer that question at, you know, for all of them at the same time. Um, we can kind of make everybody's lives a little bit easier and also, um, you know, come together, as you said, in virtual community, as you both said. So talk to me a little bit about what are the questions that you're hearing the most from the small business community right now? I, you know, like what, what are those, what are those top three or four questions that you guys are hearing the most? And Jen, I'll start with you. I mean, I think as Jody said, one of the questions is, should we stay open? Should we close? You know, how, how, how long do you think this is going to last? Um, you know, how, how long should we anticipate being closed if we are being closed? And then the other one is, you know, how can we, is there a way to do business without being open in a physical location if we can? So thinking about businesses such as like DLX and Hudson Essex, you know, they have really revamped the way they're doing business to be able to offer similar things, but offer them, um, offer their business open in that to go environment. Places like Coney Island, Two Cousins, you know, they already have that to go, but just highlighting that is that they are open. Um, and then we've seen, you know, we have businesses that have online sales and opportunities for that. We've had some that are growing into that and looking into it. So I think it's just, um, you know, as we talked about earlier, the hardest part is the unknown. We don't know. Is it two weeks? Is it three? We, we, we just, we don't know. Um, and as a business owner, that's the toughest part because you can strategize for a loss. You can strategize for a change of structure. What's hard to strategize for is how long that lasts. And unfortunately, we don't know those answers. But what we can do is help um, help guide them in some directions that, you know, maybe they can have some sales and offer some income in the, in the, in the meantime. Um, and then those conversations about, you know, what's coming down the pipeline. We know we've all been talking about the SBA loans. Um, we know that there's going to be those types of things that are going to be available. Um, those are changing rapidly. And I think Jody yeah. will probably send an email out soon about what's, what's next in that. Um, but really keeping posted on those opportunities that are available too. So how can you do business in the short term? How long is it going to last? What are my options are really the primary questions. And then, you know, is there any assistance with, um, you know, things like rent and utilities? And if I can't be in my business for two months, you know, how, how can I pay my rent? Or is there an option to work with property owners to do a structured delay of that process? Um, so, you know, those types of things as well. Are you, are you seeing things with where, you know these. Well, Jody, I'm, well, I'm gonna, I want to. I want to stay on this question for a second. What are you? Are you? What kind of questions are coming into you that are really frequently asked that um, that are filling up your inbox? So they kind of come in waves as as all the changes have taken place. You know, last week it was a lot of questions about the SBA loans, um, and you know, real quickly, um, <laughs> I realized in this process I was going to have to change how I normally do things and, and manage our team, not just because we are remote, but because the sheer volume of questions that we have. So what we've kind of done is is really, I've tasked different team members to, to do deep dives on different pieces that are coming out. Because as much as I try to stay up on what's coming in my inbox, I mean, you both can, you both can relate. And, and so I'm sure can everyone else getting this. Um, it's just an, I mean, I thought I got a lot of emails before this, but <laughs> yeah. No. You're, like using Google, you're like becoming a Gmail Google filter. <laughs> somebody, uh, assistant. Yeah, yeah, somebody yeah. yesterday said, I've gotten an email from everyone I've ever given my email address, every company <laughs> I've ever given my email address yeah. to. Yeah, that's true. Um, but anyway, so, you know, like Barrett Thomas, our economic development director, he has past lending experience. Um, and, and uh, Jessica Grimmin, who's our uh, economic development liaison for the northern part of the county, they've kind of been uh, tag teaming on the SBA loans, uh, really trying to get information out there um, when we have it uh, and pushing that out. I would say, you know, we've seen a decrease in those questions since the initial flurry. Okay. Um, 
last few days, it was similar to what Jen said. Yeah, should I stay open? Um, what should I do? How do I take care of my employees? You know, when the governor said take temperatures for employees, got a lot of questions about that. Um, we're still getting questions about that, by the way, um, particularly because of HIPAA and um, health information. So, you know, I, I, I do think people will see us push a little bit of information out about that. I'm not an HR rep, I'm not a lawyer. I cannot give you actual advice, but what I can tell you are some best practices we're hearing from other businesses about, you know, making sure you're doing that in private with them employees not in front of everybody um, to protect their privacy uh, that kind right. of stuff um, and then uh, you know all the changes coming from Congress <laughs> um, yeah. these are huge two trillion two trillion dollars worth of changes that are yeah, yeah. From Congress. yeah and there's so here's what happened you know so Congress will pass that package and then it gets handed off to the agencies to interpret and issue rules and issue mm -hmm. Um, information and guidance on it and simple questions um, that we've had, I mean, I say simple in air quotes from when does the family's first coronavirus act go into effect? Mm -hmm. We thought we had an answer April 2nd, April 2nd, just this morning, now DOL is saying maybe it's April 1st. So, yep. you know, it's hard for business owners to um, plan when we're getting conflicting things and then of course they passed more legislation so um so that's what a lot of our our um questions have been recently and we're trying to so clint knight our workforce development director he's kind of been trying to to tag team on the families first coronavirus act um i actually really need to figure out who's gonna take the second piece of legislation now and and look at that um you know, we've had, uh, you know, we joined with uh, downtown Mansfield and Destination Mansfield to publish the list of uh, food places that are still open yeah. and delivering. So Ashley's been on that for us. So, you know, every every staff member has been kind of tackling different projects. Yeah. Um, but, but those, I would say, are the, the biggest questions. Um, and then people asking for advice. Um, and so I think, you know, one thing I would say is, um, you know, if you haven't talked to your accountant or your lawyer, you need to. Um, cash flow obviously is going to be the number one concern right now. Um, we're trying to see who we could maybe uh, tap for some general information, but the people that you work with most closely are going to be your best bet. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, like both Jen and I ourselves, um, you know, I, I, the chamber is its own small business, right? So I'm tackling these questions like as the chamber president and then as Jody, the boss of the chamber. And, mm -hmm. you know, what do I want? How do, how do I handle this from our own cash flow? Yeah. And how, do, how do I work through this? Yeah. And, and We're all here honestly, together on this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like wearing all of those hats, I think has been a challenge. And, and to be honest with you and fully disclosure, you know, I mean, um, so far I've just really been focused on the external, um, mm -hmm. how do we get that, in? but but now um, I'm, I am trying to just also look internally and, and figure out what, what needs to change ourselves, so. Sure. Um, and that's a, you know, it's just so much coming at you guys at the same time and, um, no one is doing this to annoy anyone. <laughs> you know, these are not the questions that, these are not the emails that you wish people wouldn't send. They're the emails they're sending yeah. because they trust you guys and they're like literally saying, I don't know what to do here and I need a little bit of help. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got to be- want Yeah. I oh, want yeah. them to email right. us because we can't figure out what questions business owners have if they're not reaching out. Yeah. Um, we did a survey last week. We'll, we'll likely do at least uh, another one maybe later this week or early next. Um, but I, you know, please don't feel like anyone is bugging us. Even if we're answering the same question 40 times, um, it helps us to know what is on business owners' minds so that we're staying uh, relevant and on top of the things they're asking. And what's the best way for what's the best way for somebody on the call today or somebody that's listening to the call? Um, what's the best way for them to reach you guys? Jody, do you want to go first? 
Sure. So um, our office, uh, we're remote, but you can call the main chamber number. Uh, we all have our extensions in there and that's forwarding to our houses right now. So 419-522-3211. My okay. extension is 102. Um, and I'll throw my email address in the, the chat here um, so you can get Great. a hold of me that way easily. So 419-522-3211. And then yep. there's an extension tree there. Um, Jen, how about you? What's the best way for folks to reach you, you guys at Downtown Mansfield, Inc.? So we're also um, all remote, too, now, of course. Um, our office phone is actually an iPhone. So Katie has our office phone working from home. So you can call us at the office and you'll reach Katie. Um, I'll put our phone number in here. Um, <clears throat> or, oh, whoops. Well, let me try that again. Sorry. <laughs> Um, There's a missing number there, but that's okay. We'll I know. We're going to work, work our way through I it. I mean, I don't know. Okay. So, well, yeah, I'll do that in a second. So, also, people can email me directly. I'm just Jennifer K at downtownmansfield.com. So, those are probably the two best ways to get a hold of us. Um, you, we also get lots of messages through all social media. Um, most of our social media messaging comes through um the general public um that's how people get a hold of us most commonly now and we get a ton i mean hundreds of messages on our social media um so people can always ask us questions that way especially if they want to know you know what's open or how to get a hold of people we're happy to do that um, businesses can also message us that way if they want um, but they most likely usually just call or email Thanks. Um, so let's, I'm going to move on to another question here. How have you guys seen, like, let's talk a little bit about how you've That's seen right. local businesses change or adapt to COVID-19. We've talked a lot about, um, we've talked a lot about what, you know, the, the conditions that we're in right now, but I'm interested in, in hearing a little bit about from the front lines, what you guys have seen as responses um, from our business community and how they are changing and adapt adapting a lot of the folks that are on this call you can there's some names on here that i recognize that are people that own small businesses or serve small businesses um so i'd love to i'd love to hear what you guys are seeing on the front line Who, who's adapting well you know what ideas should other businesses steal from um you know <laughs> we are all in this together so like who's got good ideas and, and, and how can we steal them so I think I talked a little bit already about Hudson, Essex and DLX and places like that that are going from you know, their traditional dine-in restaurants. Maybe they offered takeout originally too, but really streamlining that so it's grab and go. I know Docs is doing like a um, no contact delivery. So really putting that out there for people who are concerned as to like, this is how it, this is how it works for us. So if you're ordering takeout, but you're worried about it, you know, they'll make sure to let everybody know that they're, this is their protocol for it. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, we get a lot of messages from the general public who want to know how takeout works. Um, so okay. there are a lot of people who apparently don't ever do takeout. And so they're like, do I just pull my car up? Do I go in? Like a lot of those kinds of questions. So I think as a business owner being really specific about saying, mm -hmm. this is how it works, really just assume that people don't understand all of it. Because a lot of people really, maybe that's their first time ordering takeout other than at a fast food. So they really need those specific instructions. Um, and we've seen some of our, bo our boutiques transition into online. So again, just keeping that communication open, I think, has been really key. The merchants, the, the small businesses um, who are really keeping their social media, um, all of their marketing going. And I know a lot of the salons are showing you know, images of haircuts and stuff they've done in the past and really saying, hey, don't, I think I saw Salam Vavache say earlier, you know, book some of these things in the future. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that maintaining that connection, it seems like a simple thing, but I think it keeps that business relevant. It keeps the concept of purchasing gift cards and things like that now, and it mm -hmm. keeps people thinking in the future. Um, and so when we do get out of this, they're like, I can't wait to go back for this. So yeah. I think those are some of the good things we're seeing. Yeah, our um, our founder, the Sources founder, Carl Perniak, and I were talking um, last week about this sort of this natural instinct at this point to go silent and hunker down. Mm -hmm. uh, 
mm-hmm. you know, to, do, you know, you're sort of retreating, you know, during this process. And it's just like this incredibly natural human desire, almost an animal desire to do is to just make yourself safe, shrink your circle, hunker down. And, you know, the opposite of that is really to the degree to which you can control that. The opposite of that is actually the more constructive thing to do. It's just really hard because Mm -hmm. everything in our being right now is just telling us to, you know, I'm just going to watch Tiger King on Netflix and, you know, (laughs) call me in a week, you know, and that is, and by the way, it is really hard. That show is bonkers. Um, I haven't, I haven't <laughs> gotten there yet. Looking, like, if you think that you are crazy, like you're you're worried about your mental illness, or you're worried that you might be really strange and weird, and you watch Tiger King. You are way more normal than you thought you were. <laughs> like, woo! Um, Jody, what are you seeing? Like, because again, wider lens, you know, lots of manufacturers, um, mm-hmm. you know, in the entire county um, where Jen and I are in many cases, you know, like we're down, at, you know, we're down, we're downtown a lot. And Jen specifically is, is focused on that. Talk to us a little bit about the wider lens. You know, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, I mean, I think for like um, non retail or restaurant businesses, um, a lot of them are able to operate remotely. Um, mm-hmm. They may not have their storefronts open. So, um, you know, certainly they um, uh, we're seeing them trying to embrace tools like Zoom and, and things like that to. Um, uh, <laughs> Brittany's emoji <laughs> game is very emoji. strong today. Um, I, I- <laughs> um, you know, from manufacturers, um, you know, uh, I think uh, they're trying to figure out, you know, I mean, we've seen people when they when they are open, uh, they've had to do things like showing uh, their um, or, or shutting down their congregating areas, you know, uh, taking away um, uh chairs and things like that where everyone could sit together um, we're seeing some of that um and hearing some of that you know i think again business owners are, are trying to take it as, as seriously as they can um the last thing they want is to be a headline about something spreading in their uh facility right. so um you know really we've seen um again the, the lieutenant governor actually shared some pretty good best practices the other day that i typed up while he was speaking and i listed in one of my emails but but things like you know assigning an employee specifically mm-hmm. doing that that um cleaning on a regular basis is a, a great uh option don't share tools don't share you know work surfaces uh phones things like that um, and the biggest thing I think is just, you know, if you, if you have people that can work at home, really they should be working at home at this point. Um, yeah. I know sometimes there's a safety factor of like, well, we're all in the office together. We're not letting one, anyone else in, but in um, which is okay. But if somebody gets sick and they bring it in and you're all, um, uh, and you all catch it, what happens? Uh, how are you able to carry out your business if you're all sick? So um, those are the tough questions that I think people yeah. are asking. Um, and I just, you know, again, I can't tell anyone what to do. Richland Public Health can't tell you what to do um, on, on those calls. But I think, you know, really thinking about it um, and, and what what's your acceptable level of risk um, as a business owner? That, that's really yeah. what you need to wrestle with. What, talk to us a little bit about the manufacturing sector, Jody. It's the biggest, it's the biggest sector in our economy right after healthcare. And we obviously know healthcare is busy right now. Mm-hmm. They're working. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the manufacturing sector, are most of the businesses in our manufacturing sector, um, are they classified as essential businesses? Are some of them, like, is there kind of a mixed bag there? Um, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. I think um, many of them are in a supply chain somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so we have um, many that are open and operating. Um, some are operating at a smaller capacity than they normally would be uh, because customer orders are, are smaller. Um, we have some that are busier than they ever have been um, sure. because of their uh, role in the supply chain. Um, right. So it definitely has not um, 
they're still busy. I would say many of them. It's it, it really depends on what sector they're in. Um, we've been doing some calls with them, just trying to get um, our ear to the ground in terms of what are they seeing? Um, are they seeing a lot of call offs yet? Things like that. Um, so, you know, more, more to come on that, obviously. But um, I think a big thing to know is there are employees or employers hiring right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, uh, you guys ran a story the other day about next generation films um yep and what they're doing for their employees they are in the supply chain uh of, of food um they are busy very busy um, they're hiring a lot of the healthcare obviously facilities are hiring right now um but you know uh a lot of the retail food establishments are, are hiring in terms of like kroger's and uh, mm -hmm. dollar generals things like that um so, uh, you know, while people are temporarily off, those might be options for them um, right. until things get moving again. So we're we're trying to um, just stay as close as we can to it as possible. Um, this is just a quick a quick question, but we we've talked a lot about um, sort of our service businesses like restaurants and delis and coffee shops and that kind of thing and. Um, uh, you got you guys alluded that I know we've published it and I know that a lot of the media the local media has been doing that so certainly you can look I think Brittany dropped that into I believe Brittany dropped a, um, a link into the chat about a list of um, restaurants and businesses that are still open and serving customers um, are you guys that list are you guys updating that um, frequently so that that's a link that they can they can go back to to check in on um, as things change change and, and businesses either decide to close down or, or decide to um, to do a temporary closure or they or they stay open is that something you guys are updating on a daily basis at at Dest or with destination manfield and collaboratively? yes yeah okay. so that's a lot if you um if people uh restaurateurs if you're making changes um mm -hmm. if you can let us know that that would be great um i have uh, ashley meyer on our team is is trying to scour things as much as she can um when we see it we're sharing it with uh the destination mansfield team to update so um but as people see things if they can let us know because it is changing um day, day to day as some owners are just deciding you know it's just uh too hard to continue right now we just rather wait so which we understand and, and certainly respect yeah absolutely um so we're going to pivot now toward um this is the type of the conversation where i want to encourage everybody that's here to um, drop your questions into the chat or use the ask a question function um so that um we can we can get your questions answered um and we can have that conversation here together with the the 32 or 33 people right now that are joining us um, on the chat today. So our first one comes from Bo Shaw. Um, Bo says, I was I was worried about the safety of takeout food. I saw something from the FDA a few days ago. I can't find the link saying that eating food prepped is quite safe. If, if there is contamination and you eat it, your digestive system will kill the bug. There is currently no evidence of getting sick from eating food. So this is like not quite a question, but um, it certainly could um, throw one out there. Um, is that the information that you guys have? Is that you know if food prepared under the under the conditions that the um, that the state is offering is it's entirely safe, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, that's that's what we're understanding as well. Um, Restaurants um, are preparing food to a certain degree when they're, there's, they're already under really strict um, guidelines for, for all the way they prepare food. And so mm -hmm. those, those guidelines are really intended to reduce any kind of contamination. So those continue and those will reduce this. But there, there was a link, and I can't remember who posted it, but um, they're saying that they're not seeing any of that come through the digestive system. And I think, you know, the fact that, so my husband's, um, he's the food service director at Mount Vernon city schools. And as part of what they're doing d during the school shutdown, I mean, they're, they're passing out a thousand meals a day, um, in, in, um, to the, the children of the, of Mount Vernon and that's government mandated. So they're really making sure that that food is safe. If that wasn't a safe thing, 
a lot of that food would, would not be happening. So I think it's really important that people know that that's, that's, that's considered safe. Good. CDC, FDA, everybody. And Jen did point out, you know, the governor's been ordering takeout. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't think he'd be ordering takeout if he was going to get sick from it. But, no, that, but again, so. that goes back to like, you know, what some of the restaurants are doing with their grab and goes, you know, really reducing that person to person contact. So mm -hmm. it's not a foodborne illness. Um, and I think that's part of the struggle is, you know, we're all not amateur scientists or professional scientists. So right, when I there's know. illness, you know, we're all like, wait, what, how does that work? You know, do I get sick this way, that way? So we really have to look to people to say this is this is not a foodborne illness. It's a person to person virus that can spread. And the ways that you can reduce that are limiting that person to person contact. So grab and go food, all of those things. I'm not an epidemiologist, but I play one on Facebook. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, Bo, Bo commented if Dr. Acton is OK with it, that's good enough for me. And, yeah. and certainly, mm -hmm. I mean, really. She's been right who I've been listening to closely every day about changes in that. So, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely something to be proud of um, for being in Ohio is Dr. Acton. Just her entire demeanor has just been able to sort of be this calming demeanor in a very uncertain time, and I'm I certainly value her. Um, mm -hmm. Just period. Absolutely. Um, We've got a question here. Uh, given the recent orders from the government, you know, what would what would be things that you guys would recommend that we can do to help our small businesses, um, particularly our local ones? You know, if if you had three things that if you had three things that anybody in Mansfield could do or anybody could do, um, what would you ask? What would you recommend that they do? How can we help our small businesses? beyond sort of you know of course you can do the the i love my small business facebook post but how do you make i love my small right. business real <laughs> you know during this time so if they have if they have an online presence purchase online um mm -hmm. if they have gift certificate options purchase so the single most important thing you can do for a small business if you're worried about them is provide them with some income so buy something if you can't get there now buy something in the future i mean that's really important um, secondly, um, interact with them um, on socials. It helps their marketing. So this is a great time if you're someone who's never done any of those kinds of rating your business or sharing reviews or recommendations. Do that. That does help. And people, a lot of people really do rely on those recommendations um, for things. I will say if you are buying gift certificates, also think about maybe not using them the second they open because then there's costing them money that they don't have that right. second. So yeah. maybe buy a gift certificate and then, you know, maybe like in the fall you can use that one and then pay for it. So we don't right. want them to go broke right away. Um, those are two things And if they're still in business and they're doing takeout, you know, do, do business with them if you can now for mm -hmm. sure. And then recommend them. I mean, the, the, those ways you can support them. And then lastly, just ask them, if you're friends with a small business owner or you know a small business owner, um, the best thing you can do is really, you know, give them a call or shoot them a message and just say, hey, I really value your business. We're concerned about you. We hope that you're doing well. Is there something we can do to help? Because there may be things that they need that they're not sharing that we don't know. So always ask. Those are my three. Yeah, I really don't have much to add to that. I think you covered the things that I've been seeing uh, in the chamber community and some of the channels that I'm in. Um, you know, I think um, depending on who someone is and the role that they play in that business, uh, you know, uh, we may have folks that are uh, their accountants or their landlords or things like that. I mean, um, I know uh, even the banks um, are talking about, you know, how do they show some support uh, and work with businesses. So, you know, I, I would definitely say, you know, to, to business owners who are listening, when you start to feel like you're running into an issue, you need to be work, reaching out to your team and your team should be your accountant, your lawyer, uh, your banker, your business banker. Um, you need to talk to them soon um, so that they can help you 
uh, think through how do you uh, work through a, a, an extended situation where there maybe isn't income coming in. Um, you know, every small business is different. So, you know, retail and, and restaurants we've talked a lot about, but um, but there's a mm -hmm. lot of small businesses that aren't in those sectors and, mm -hmm. and there may be ways for you to continue on. Um, there, there may not be during this time. So even in good times, I always recommend, you know, that team of your banker, your lawyer, your accountant, um, maybe even your insurance agent to, um, they should be your, your advising team, but especially right now. And if you don't have that, or you don't feel like you have people that you can uh, trust, call me, send me an email. I'd be happy to give you some referrals to members that we have that uh, can absolutely give you some, some good advice. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, there's a tendency, and again, I get this, it's human nature, right? Um, I went through it myself, that sheer pan moment of panic of like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? You know, that for me, you know, I started thinking, well, shoot, we're gonna have to cancel the business expo, that stinks, to really realizing like, mm. oh crap, <laughs> what event are we gonna be able to host again and when will that be? Um, mm -hmm. And how are yeah. we gonna work through that? And, and you know, after I had my little moment of panic, I, I was able to back off of the ledge and, and, you know, reach out to people who are much smarter than me to help me think through that. Um, and so I think, you know, one of my biggest messages as small business owners is you're not alone. If you think you're alone, mm -hmm. call Jen, um, call, mm -hmm. you know, Tassif and others who are working with you. We want to help you. We want, uh, we probably aren't the expert that are going to get you through it, right? But we know them and we can absolutely mm -hmm. connect with them. Yeah, hell, call me um, too, if you want. Um, my, <laughs> you can reach out to me at j at richlandsource.com. Um, my cell phone number is 419-610-3885. Um, you know, and, and I echo what Jen and Jody are saying. If I don't know the answer, I I probably know somebody that that does. Um, you know, talk to us. You know, talk to Richland Source via all of the dozen and a half channels that we have open, including this one. Um, we've just seen some great stuff in the chat just now. I mean, in terms of um, you know different ideas, we've got um, you know. To pay your yoga instructor, even though you can't see her, um, you know, pay your dog mm -hmm. walker, you know, just tip well, you know, I'm finding, you know, if you're mm -hmm. taking out, remember that a lot of those servers, they haven't changed, you know, they haven't changed their income, the way that they're paid, and, and they depend on your tips. So now's the time to tip 30% if you can afford it. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you're buying, you know, if you're buying a, an $8 hamburger, make it a $16 hamburger if you can do it because right that that server is not getting the volume of tips that he or she was getting and so it, it you know those kinds of things help a lot and they go directly into that employee oftentimes go directly into that employee's pocket um there's I, also i want to add to that yeah go ahead i want to add to that too one thing we haven't talked about are um, independent artists and arts organizations mm -hmm. which i know we all know are struggling significantly right now it's really a hard time for them so if you're someone who has a membership to a place like um, the Renaissance Theater, Little Buckeye, the Academy, Playhouse, places like that, or if you've got tickets there um, for shows that aren't happening, consider donating those tickets, you know, just donating that money back and don't ask for mm -hmm. refunds. Um, it's really, really important that those artists stay engaged and we want them to be successful. They're a huge part of our whole Richland County community, obviously a significant part of downtown. And we really need to be mindful too that we're supporting them at this time too. This is a great time to have like if you've got art artists doing things and they can still do outdoor art. Um, yep. You know, you can put some money down for performances in the future. So those are important entrepreneurs too and small businesses that we don't typically think about as well. Mm -hmm. um, Lori mentions here in the chat, which I think is a good sense is that like for folks like barbershops or um, hair salons, I mean, I have never been happier for male pattern baldness than I am right now. Um, <laughs> this is a great time to be me when it comes to hair care. Um, but the, but for those of you that for those of you that need that service, I'm um, really those guys are out of business for right now. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. gift certificates and that kind of thing are really important for them. Um, and Lori makes a, a really good, a really good point there. Um, mm -hmm. 
and thank you for that. Um, so let's see here. I think we have one more question, and then, um, well, no, I think we, I think that was our last one. Does anybody have? If there's any other questions for these guys, we're, you know, we've still got a few more minutes left on the webinar, and and I mean they are such tremendous resources. Um, but I, I'm not seeing a lot more coming in. So ending a meeting early, there, there's no sin in that. Um, so I want to I want to make sure you know really thank you guys for taking the time out to do this. Um, you know, as I mentioned to you in the virtual green room, I do not know what the hell I am doing. Um, I am making this up as I go along. I'm, I'm thank you, Brittany, for joining me as our producer. Um, thanks to Jody Perry, the CEO of the Richland Area Chamber of Commerce, who joined us today. Um, thanks to Jen Kaim, uh, the CEO of Downtown Mansfield Incorporated, and everyone that um, spent time with us today in this chat. Tomorrow, um, I want to tell you guys a little bit about what we have um, going on and, and how you can access and share this information in the future. Um, if you'd like to revisit it, this video will be published along with all of our previous um, chats on Richland Source in the coming days. That's richlandsource.com. We will likely syndicate it to knoxpages.com and ashlandsource.com as well. Um, thank you guys all for the time and attention um, during this period of time when we're all super uncertain. I hope that this has brought a little bit of value to you. You can see me shifting my eyes because that's where the things are that I'm reading <laughs> because I don't have this stuff memorized yet. Um, so we'll just put that away and we'll just kind of say it. Um, I want to thank, I want to give a shout out to our reporting team and our team at Source Brand Solutions. They are working literally round the clock. Um, to try to bring um, current and reliable information to our communities. And um, I couldn't be prouder um, to work for them and to support their work. Um, and then just finally, just a couple of plugs for what's coming up this week. Um, somewhere on your screens, I don't know what it looks like because my screen's a little bit different than yours, is a follow button. I think it's green. If you follow us on Crowdcast, you'll be notified as we go live in the coming days. Um, of course, you can add one more thing, Jody. Jump in. <laughs> okay. I was just going to say, you know, I think that um, it's really important um, to just continue to encourage people to remember that we're going to get through this um, and our organizations are going to be here to help you rebuild so um there yep. there are there are organizations that aren't on the screen that are also fully in on this um you know i think uh it we've all had those moments of, of fear and doubt and uncertainty and and panic um but uh you know this will end. Uh, we don't know exactly when yet, um, but we're here. Um, and I think that has been our biggest uh, push out to the community is just to let them know we're not going anywhere. We're all talking behind the scenes. We're working together, um, not just us. I mean, including you guys, Jay, including many others. Um, so maybe that isn't always um, you know, everyone's not a part of all those conversations. So I just want want the community to know in general, like we're all we're all invested in this. We're we're not walking away from it, and um, we don't know what everything will look like when we emerge, obviously yet. But um, we're going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to help help this community rebuild. Absolutely. Yep, that's that is for sure. Um, we had a late breaking question come in and I think we've kind of answered it, but um, this is from Amy Arnold. Um, she asks, what type of support is available to massage therapists who have a private practice? The order was issued from the state medical board to cease clean, seeing clients until further notice. And as a result, our doors are closed and there's no opportunity for income. Um, thank you. Well, thank you for the question, Amy. And, and I think that probably um, I don't know if there's support for those types of businesses from the state as of yet. I know that um, SBA loans are coming in um, and that relief, and I believe there is some other types of relief that are sort of being discussed and, and worked through at the state and federal level that maybe they're not so much loans as other forms of relief. We just don't know what those are yet. Um, and you know frankly for those of you that are you know that are that go to that use massage therapists or hell if you know somebody that could use one now's a great time to buy a gift card um at that massage therapist to help them with their cash flow and 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 help them maintain their customer base um 
So I'm going to give you one. I would just say to that, you know, um, we we passed that uh, question on to the state. The state has has in a couple of their press conferences, the lieutenant governor said several times that they're looking to the federal government to answer some of those questions on 1099 employees and and folks that are are maybe in Amy situation. I mean, as a business owner, yes, they may have access to an SBA loan. Obviously, that has to be paid back. Um, if you don't know the information on that, shoot me an email. My email was in the chat earlier. Um, or if you check out our website, uh, we have shared all of our SBA materials um, on there. Um, I don't know because I, I just haven't had a chance to dig in. I know Congress passed something last night. I'm not sure if there's something in there yet. Um, we will certainly be looking at that and uh, anything that we run across, we will push out to um, to that community. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that's probably been one of the bigger gap areas that we've seen so far um, is uh, employees who are in that situation um, for yeah. sure. So. So you guys can, for, if you're still on with us, looks like a lot of you are, um, you can reach Jody and the Richland Area Chamber at 419-522-3211. Um, you can reach Jen and her staff at Downtown Mansfield Incorporated at 419-522-0099. Um, you can reach us at Richland Source at 419-610-2100. Um, you can reach me personally at j at richlandsource.com. And um, tomorrow, we have a fun episode tomorrow. Um, all So many of us are now remote working. And um, I have been, you know, we built our company to be remote, remote. So this wasn't terribly difficult for us. But I know that's not the same for everybody. Um, if you're used to looking, if you're used to going to an office and you're now um, at your kitchen table, um, tomorrow we're going to talk about how to remote work like a pro. And um, I'm going to have as a guest all the way from Philadelphia, which I think is super appropriate, um, one of my friends and colleagues from the local independent online news publishers, Chris Krusen, um, who has who manages a remote team that has employees in Vermont, from Vermont to Wisconsin, and all the way in between, um, serving independent publishers like Richland Source. Chris is a great guy. Um, he's an absolute pro. And, and so I I encourage you guys to register for that, especially if you're just looking for, you know, stupid little tricks and tools that that help um, that help you stay on task and get stuff done and communicate with your team. And then on Friday, um, we're also really excited um, because we're going to talk about something that's a little bit different. Um, we're going to talk about our kids. And um, our kids are a little scared right now. That's the reality. Um, depending on their ages, they might be you know, they might be trying to figure this out um, at very different developmental levels. And so I'm going to be joined by um, Emily Talbot, who is a licensed clinical um, social worker with Providers for Healthy Living, and um, with Kristen Gilbert, the CEO of the Mansfield Area YMCA. So that's what we have on for the rest of the week. It's noon every single day. Um, register um, here on Crowdcast and make sure you follow us. And then next week we just booked, um, looks like we just booked Brady Groves and Jim Cutright of the Richland Area Community Foundations and the Ashland Community Foundation to talk about how philanthropy is mobilizing to help to help during uh, coronavirus. And um, we've got a number of other guests that are sort of in process right now. Oh, I just got a notification that we booked um, also next week, we'll have Stan Jefferson and Mike Ziegelhofer from the Mansfield City Schools and the Lexington um, and Lexington Schools to talk about, hey man, school's <clears throat> out What's next. Um, so we'll be talking with some school administrators next week and um, as well as others that'll be booked. So follow us. Thank you again to our guests. Um, thank you guys for um, helping me learn how to do webinars. Um, you're watching me learn this in real time. So, and we will see you tomorrow at noon and um, maybe you can show us your sandwiches and what you guys are eating and sharing for lunch. And tell, we'll talk a little bit about what we're having for lunch. So we'll see you guys. Have a great day. Um, enjoy it and um, get out and- Thanks guys. As best you can. Thank you guys for joining us. Bye-bye.